I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to the Logic Advanced course. The aim of this course is to take your knowledge of logic and music production to the next level by teaching you about various advanced techniques for using different areas of the software to inspire you and help to develop your own unique way of working. I'm assuming that you've either taken the beginner's course already or have a pretty good understanding of logic, as the pace of the advanced course is much quicker. For example, you should already know about how to play with and edit audio and MIDI regions. You should have a good idea about how to use different effects and instruments with tracks. And you should have started to get used to the idea of envelope modulation, certainly when it comes to level and frequency. However, we'll be expanding all of these techniques throughout the course. Remember, if you have any questions at any point, then you can contact me on support at logic-courses.com or you can go to the Producer Tech Forum where you can discuss issues with other students and myself. We're going to be starting off fairly gently then by looking at a technique that you'll have at least heard mentioned, and that's sidechaining. Probably the most common use of sidechaining is with a compressor, where one or more audio signals are being compressed, but instead of their own signals determining the nature of the compression, a completely separate signal is determining it, so that when that separate signal becomes louder, the other signals become quieter. Therefore, the signal being sent to the sidechain of the compressor normally wants to be clear and dominant in the track, and not hidden or muffled by other sounds. The most common signal in dance music is probably a kick drum, with the signals being compressed by it generally being bass lines, as these signals are most likely to conflict due to the similar frequency content or sometimes all other accompanying parts, such as synth and vocal lines. This creates a popular effect called pumping, which is used to create more energy and dynamics in a track. Let's take a look at sidechaining with the compressor in Logic then. I've created a simple session here with a drum loop and a MIDI region triggering the bass station. The looped one bar long MIDI region has continuous overlapping notes and the bass station has an amplitude envelope with a sustain set to max, so the bass line is sounding the entire time with no breaks. I've added a little portamento to the bass part to make it more interesting. Here's what the bass and drums sound like together. You can hear, as the bass line and kick drum are similar frequencies, that the bottom end is pretty cloudy as it is, I've actually boosted the lower frequencies of both parts using a low shelf on the channel EQ of those tracks to make the effect even more obvious. In order to make the kick drum stand out more then, and to make the bass line more interesting and dynamic, we can add a compressor to the bass station track and then use the sidechain to duck the level on every crotchet beat as the kick drum sounds. Firstly, what I've done in the session here is to use a separate sidechain track I do this quite a lot, rather than use the kick drum in my session for the sidechain, as this may drop in and out of the song, which makes continual sidechaining more difficult. So this sidechain track has a kick drum sample dragged onto it, and then copied and pasted onto every beat. It then has the output routing on the track set to no output, so that you don't hear it, but can still use it as a sidechain source. If you think you'll use this technique quite a lot, then you may want to save an empty session with a sidechain track like this as a template using the file menu. Then you won't have to create this track every time you start a new session. So going back to the compressor on the bass track now, we just choose the sidechain track from the list in the top right corner. Now if I solo the bass, you can hear that it ducks every time the kick drum sounds. All that's happening here then is the action of the compressor is being controlled by the kick drum on the sidechain track, whilst the signal being processed by the compressor is the bass line. With no sidechain source selected, the compressor acts as it normally would, where the signal being processed and that controlling the action of the compressor are the same. Although I expect you're pretty familiar with the compressor settings, I'll quickly run through some of the parameters to show you the effect they have on the bass line. Firstly, the threshold and ratio change the amount of effect the kick drum has. Lowering the threshold and raising the ratio both increase the amount of gain reduction.
The other important parameters are attack and release. These set how soon the compressor starts to act and then stops acting after the kick drum sounds. So shortening the attack time and lengthening the release time makes the effect start earlier and last for longer, which makes the dips in level on each kick drum more obvious. If the kick drum you're using on the sidechain track has a fast decay, perhaps unlike the kick drum in the actual drums in your track, then setting a longer release makes up for this and creates a sidechaining effect as if a kick drum with a longer decay is in use. With very long release times, you can make the bassline never reach an uncompressed state, as the compression is still fading out while the next kick drum sounds, whereas a shorter release time makes the level jump up and down more to create an obvious pumping sound. For the most precise sidechain compression, you need to set the compressor to peak acting, rather than RMS, where it follows the average level. Having peak acting with the shortest attack time can create a click at the start though, as the level cuts very abruptly, so you normally want to increase the attack time a little to remove this. On some hardware and software compressors, you'll find you have the option of sidechain EQ. This means that you can EQ the signal being sent to the sidechain of a compressor so that only the high or low frequency sounds control the type of compression rather than all the frequencies in the signal. For example, you may want to use the drum loop on a track as the sidechain source, but only the kick drum from it. In which case, you can route it to an auxiliary channel on the mixer, in this case using bus 1, now you can EQ the loop using the channel EQ to remove the frequencies you don't want. Hear how rolling off the high end with a low pass leaves just the kick drum, whilst removing the bottom end with a high pass means that you're left with just the hats and high percussion. Now if we route the auxiliary channel to bus 2, then selecting that as the sidechain source for the baseline's compressor means that you can have the EQ drum loop feeding the compressor sidechain instead. Although it's not important to use sidechaining on higher frequency sounds, as they don't conflict with the kick drum, it's become increasingly common to use this effect on many different parts within a track, as you'll have heard on a lot of popular dance tracks where there's an obvious pumping of vocals, leads, and bass lines. I've added a simple pad over the top of the bass line now, so I can create the same effect just by holding down the Apple and Alt key and pasting the compressor from the bass line across to the new track. Now you've got both these parts pumping with the kick drum. If you have a lot of parts that you want to sidechain in this way, then remember that you can always route them to a bus, like bus 3, and then have just one compressor on the new auxiliary channel, instead of different compressors on every track. Another common use of compressor sidechaining I find is when I'm making the soundtrack to something with voiceover and music, and I want the music to drop in level when the voice sounds. To do this, you just put a compressor on the music track and select the voiceover as the sidechain source. A similar but even more drastic effect can be produced with a gate, 